Sim Racing chassis provided by Next Level Racing. Check them out at nextlevelracing.com. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable, and today we're reviewing the brand new entry-level Xbox One compatible wheel from Thrustmaster, the TMX. Now, this isn't our first rodeo with the TMX. Last month, I flew to New York City and got to test drive it on Forza Motorsport 6 at the TMX launch event at the Microsoft Store on 5th Avenue. At the same time, Darren released his first look of the TMX on the Xbox One. So today for this review, we're going to focus a little more towards the PC since we haven't touched on that yet. By being Xbox One and PC compatible, the TMX is the ying to the PS4 and PC compatible T150 yang. It features the same specs as a T150, including the 12-bit resolution wheel, 10-bit pedal resolution, mixed belt pulley and gear system, 11-inch or 28-centimeter diameter rubber-coated wheel that isn't removable, 270 to 900 degrees of rotation that can be adjusted on the fly, 5-inch or 13-centimeter tall metal shifter paddles, a desk clamp as the wheel cannot be hard mounted but the pedals can be, and 12 action buttons plus directional D-pad. In fact, the buttons are one of the few things that differentiate the TMX from the T150. Instead of clustering the buttons on the rim like the T150, the TMX places them on the perimeter. The other difference between the two wheels is that the TMX comes in a murdered out all black compared to the blue and black theme of the T150. The TMX is plug and play on the Xbox One and only requires you to download a driver for the PC. Once the driver is downloaded, you can edit the settings in the control panel, although the default settings are a good place to start and where I ended up keeping the wheel at. So now that the box cover stuff is out of the way, let's talk about how the wheel performed. With a retail price of $199.99, the TMX wheel punches above its weight with relatively smooth force feedback and no centered dead zone thanks to the mixed belt pulley and gear system. The mixed system creates a feel that's halfway between its more expensive belt-driven sibling, the Thrustmaster TX, and the helical gear-driven Logitech G920. Force feedback strength isn't world-bending, but it is good for the price point and translate what the car is doing. The metal paddle shifters are pulled straight from the more expensive TX and feel good to the touch and are very positive feeling when engaged. What isn't quite as nice to touch is the rim. You can certainly feel the entry level price when you hold the rubber wrap plastic rim, but it does provide good grip and gets the job done. In fact, the 11 inch or 28 centimeter diameter size feels pretty generous for the price point and not so small in 2016 as real world race cars, especially GT cars, continue to run smaller and smaller rims. Like the paddles, Thrustmaster stuck to the company parts bin for the buttons and directional pad, which are pulled straight from the higher end TX and T300 wheels, which again, brings a welcome higher price point touch to the entry level. As for keeping the wheel in place, the wheel clamp and rubber pads did a nice job of doing just that, and I didn't have any issues with it sliding around. While the wheel punches well above its $199 price point, the pedals do not. Do they get the job done? Sure. They are certainly drivable, and as always with Thrustmaster, the more accurate 10-bit resolution is appreciated for relaying what your feet are doing to the game. But are they engaging? Not really. While the brake is stiffer, both pedals are very easy to press. This results in you relying on what is happening on screen to determine how far to press the brake heading into a corner instead of the feedback you get from your foot. But again, this is an entry-level product, and with the ability to replace the pedals with Thrustmaster's really solid T3PA pedals, it's clear Thrustmaster put its development budget into the wheel and not so much into the pedals. So with that said, let's get to the final thoughts. And both Darren and I share the same final thought in that the TMX is a really great entry-level wheel and is really perfect for someone looking to go from the controller and head more to the sim side and get a wheel and pedal set for a few reasons. First, it will make you faster. Going from a controller to wheel isn't a guarantee of being faster. Trust me, back in the day, I went from a controller to a wheel from a manufacturer that ends in letter Z, and I couldn't keep the car in a straight line with about five inches of dead zone. But in the TMX's case, going from the controller to the TMX will certainly make driving become much easier. Second, the TMX doesn't demand a huge investment. Besides the $199.99 price point, you also don't need to go out and buy a rig to use it. 
In fact, because of that, I decided to try it out like how a lot of people, I believe, would buy this as their first product that's sim-like. And I hooked it up to the desk where I shoot the This Week Inside Sim Racing live show and pushed the pedals against the wall and started driving. And guess what? It worked great. Only once did the pedals lift up on me and that was due to me spinning and having a pedal on a shelf instead of the floor. If I had them at a better angle, the pedals aren't going anywhere. And the wheel clamp performed even better on the desk where it had more surface area to hold on to. And while my relatively thin desk was no issue, I did test to see how thick of a desk you could clamp it to. The clamp was able to handle this one and three quarters inch gap with no problem and could probably do two inches or about 50 millimeters. The lightweight of the wheel and pedals also makes setup and teardown a breeze in case you can't keep them permanently in front of the family TV. I'd also recommend the TMX over the T150 if you're looking to get into PC racing for the same reasons I mentioned before and because it looks more expensive in the all black versus the kind of cheaper looking blue and black of the T150. Just like its PlayStation compatible counterpart, the T150, we think the TMX is the perfect gateway drug into sim racing coming in at a relatively low price and really being very user friendly and in fact at times performing better with the hybrid belt gear system than some higher price wheels like the Logitech G920. Now do want to note if you are all in into sim racing and you're planning on getting a rig or you already have a rig then you might want to look a little more upstream in price and performance like the Thrustmaster TX or if you're just a PC racer the T300 since those are better wheels but if you're not fully committed to sim racing yet or you don't have the budget or you just don't have the ability to have a setup rig in your house or apartment then the TMX is really a great option for both the Xbox One and the PC. Thanks for watching our review of the Thrustmaster TMX for the Xbox One and PC. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Also come by our website, isrtv.com, for the latest news, reviews, and our always popular forums. Also, we have a link below for our Amazon affiliate site. Please check that out if you're going to go purchase something on Amazon. It doesn't cost you a thing, just go through our portal and we get a little bit of kickback, which helps us out. So again, thanks for watching Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable. See you guys next time.